when the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. King Herod was the one sitting upon the throne in Jerusalem. He was the one who had power, and he's the one in control. But he hears about a king, the king of the Jews, and he's scared. He's troubled that there's going to be a new king. And he feels threatened that there's this king who's probably going to take over his throne. So he talks to the wise men. And he says, well, you're going to go worship King Jesus? I want to worship him too. So go find King Jesus. He asked some of the scribes, what does the scripture say about where this king is going to be born? Where is the Messiah going to be born? And in Micah 5, 2, we see that it says that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. So he sends the wise men to Bethlehem. They go seek out King Jesus. And King Herod waited some time for the wise men to come to him. He realizes that they deceived him, that they mocked him, that they didn't come back and tell him where Jesus was. Verse 16 says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. And Herod realizes that there's a threat to his throne. This king, this king of the Jews is supposed to rise up and become a great king. But Herod feels threatened. He doesn't want to give up his throne. He doesn't want to give up his power and his control of the kingdom. And he is desperate, so he sends his men to kill every baby boy, two years and younger. We see this Christmas story unfolding and we look at Mary and Joseph and they obeyed God. Then angels, how they're glorifying God and how the shepherds, they, they find Jesus and they go and worship Him. The wise men, they go and seek Him. But there's someone that I feel like shouldn't be here. He is disrupting the Christmas story. The shepherds, the angels, the wise men, they're worshiping Jesus. But King Herod is doing the exact opposite. He's trying to get Jesus as far away out of his life. He's not threatened by a little baby, baby. But he's threatened by a king who he believes is going to come and take over his kingdom. And a lot of times I hear the Christmas story and say, well, we got to be more like Mary and Joseph who kind of submit to God and obey him and follow him. No, we do. And we hear about the angels and how they glorify God. And we hear, oh, we, we got to go and worship God. We do. And just as the wise men, we need to seek Jesus. But sometimes a character in the Christmas story that I relate most with is King Herod. Sometimes I'm there and I say, well, this is my life and this is my desires and my dreams and my plans for my life. Kind of feel threatened a little bit. Kind of feel like I don't want Jesus to be at the center of my life. I mean, I like having Jesus in my life. I'm glad that I'm saved, but I don't want my whole life to be centered around Jesus. Sometimes I relate to Herod in that way. That I try to do what I desire and also have Jesus part of my life. But Jesus wants to be the center of our life. Jesus wants to be on our throne. Jesus wants complete control. He wants all of our life. In this Christmas story, we see the wise men. We see Mary and Joseph. But what this Christmas story is all about is Jesus. How Jesus is humbly fulfilling God's plan. We look at this evil king who's trying so hard to exalt himself and build his own kingdom up. Also in this Christmas story, we see the king of kings who's humbling himself. This king, King Jesus, was king of heaven and earth. He's God in heaven and he saw that we had sin and we had a need. And he sacrificed his life so that we could have salvation. So he came into this world and was born as a baby. He was born in a humble stable and was laid in a little manger. He went and suffered everything that we suffered through and he lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sin because he loved us and because he cared about us. How amazing it is to remember King Jesus. And he gave his life that we could have salvation. He wants us to live for him. This King, King Jesus, wants to sit on our throne. He wants to be in the center of our life. He wants everything of our life to be about Him. This Christmas season, will you make Jesus the center of your life? This King who wants to sit on your throne is a good King. He's a loving King. 
He loves you. He loves you so much that He even died for you. And He cares about you. And he, He's a good God. He wants to be on the throne of your life. Will you choose to make Jesus the King of your life this Christmas?